Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying this beautiful Monday. It's the sun's shining, it's nice and warm. There's a little breeze blowing here, so I hope y'all are out enjoying this. I was going to take time to do my video real quick for today. I told you I'd be here Monday. So, we're going to talk today about plastic just a little bit. I don't have a book or anything to read. We're just going to kind of talk about it. Um, I know Miss Greta's already been on here and talked about recycling some, so I was just going to talk about um, plastic just a little bit more. So, when we use the word plastic, we're actually talking about a variety of things. We're not just talking about one specific thing. There are thousands upon thousands of varieties of plastic. So within those thousands of varieties of, pa of plastics, <clears throat> there are about 45 basic families. And in those 45 basic families, there's hundreds of variations. So just like you have a family that has aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews and all that good stuff, plastic has the same thing. Um, but they, each family has certain characteristics that keep them together as a family, just like you have people who, or you have characteristics of your family that keep you together, like you may have the same last name, um, this person may have married this person, but anyway, it's kind of the same, kind of the same gist with plastic as well, okay? So, plastic has some main components that makes every plastic a type of plastic. So, plastic has natural gas and oil in it, and it also has variations of carbon and hydrogen. And they have some things that are mixed into it. Um, they have some things that's in some that's not in the others. They have different amounts of things. So to help you kind of better understand the makeup of plastic and everything, let's think about our favorite cake, okay? Everybody has a different kind of favorite cake. Some people like caramel cake, and some people like chocolate cake, and some people like red velvet cake, and some people like me like peanut butter cake. Um, but there are basic ingredients to your cake. Every cake is going to have flour and sugar and eggs, and then some sort of combination of liquid ingredients, which might be your butter and your oil, or milk, or water, or what have you. Okay, so, my husband's favorite cake is a caramel pound cake, which I like to call heart attack in a pan, because it has three cups of sugar in it, it has one cup of butter, and then it has, I think it's three cups of flour, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into it too. It's, he only gets it once a year for his birthday. Okay, so, his has three cups of flour. I like a peanut butter cake. Mine has two cups of flour. They're still cake. It's just his has three cups. Mine has two cups. His has three cups of sugar. It has one cup of dark brown sugar, one cup of light brown sugar, and one cup of white sugar. Mine just has, I think it's three-fourths of a cup of white sugar. So, it's still sugar. It's just different amounts, different kinds. His takes five eggs. Tell you it was heart attack and pan. His takes five eggs. Mine takes two. Okay? So, still those basic ingredients, but his has a different amount than mine. But it's still cake. So, then, of course, you add in the things that gives the flavoring for the caramel. We put, um, well, actually, the brown sugar makes the caramel flavor. But I think I put in milk in his and maybe some oil and stuff. Mine just has oil and milk, I think. But his has the butter as well. So, we have that combination of liquid ingredients. His is different than mine, but there is a combination of liquid ingredients. So, plastic is the same thing. They have a combination of other little ingredients that you throw in together to give plastic the compound that it is, okay? All right. So, then, of course, we know that we bake cakes at different lengths, different temperatures. Like, his is baked at 350 for almost an hour. Mine is baked at 350 for about 40 minutes, and mine's done. Mine has an icing to it. His has a glaze. Some cakes have no icing to them. So, it doesn't matter what kind of cake it is. As long as it has those basic ingredients, we call it a cake. Same way with plastic. As long as they have those basic ingredients, we can still call it plastic. So, there's all kinds of things out there. And I know Miss Greta showed some different things the other day about um, plastics. So, there's all kinds of stuff. Your plastic water bottles. Um, a lot of your toys that you play with are plastic. There's a lot of things that we use, like babies, the pacifiers that babies use are plastic. Um, we have plastic bags. We have plastic containers that we put our leftover foods in. We have CDs and DVDs. Those are made out of plastics. I wear contact lenses. Those are plastic. A lot of eyeglasses, the lenses and the eyeglasses are plastic now. Plastic makes up a big part of our life. And so, you know, how did it come to be? Because back, I think plastic was introduced somewhere around in the 60s or 70s, somewhere around in there. So, how did it become 
become such a big part of our life. Well, they figured out that plastic actually does some pretty good things. Um, actually, there's a lot of things that are life-saving devices that are made out of plastic. Um, there's a lot of, well, of course, a lot of the machines that we use have lots of plastic components to them, and we know how important those things are um, in our daily lives now. There's a lot of machines that make life easier, like a vacuum cleaner and a computer and a TV that um, not maybe not necessarily makes life easier, but makes life more enjoyable. But those things are made out of plastic, okay? So plastic, they found out, you know, there's, there's so much versatility to it. There's so many things they could do with it that they decided, you know, that this is a pretty worthwhile material to have around. And um, they also found out that it helps make food last longer. So that's why a lot of our food products are sold in plastic containers. It helps to keep them from spoiling. So there's just a lot of good things about plastic. Um, that just makes it such a marketable material to have, okay? All right, so there are seven basic types of plastic, even though there's 45 families, there's seven basic types, okay? So I'm gonna give you the big scientific names for those, but luckily you don't have to remember those big scientific names. And I'm gonna see if I can remember them because I don't have my notes in front of me, okay? All right, so we have polyethylene terephthalate. We have high density polyethylene. We have polyvinyl chloride. We have low density polyethylene. We have, uh oh, here I'm gonna get in trouble. Uh, we have, oh, I can't remember this one. Oh my goodness, this is horrible. And um, we have polystyrene, and then the last one is just a group of all kinds of different things, but I can't remember what the fifth one is. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Maybe I'll think of it here in just a minute. But anyways, you don't have to remember those scientific names. Isn't that wonderful? All you have to know is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's all you have to remember. You don't have to remember the big scientific names for these plastics and that's great because I obviously forgot to. Um, so anyways, I know in past videos that we have talked about and if you have been in one of our classes then you have heard us talk about too that in our county we only recycle type 1 and type 2 plastics. Um, so what makes a plastic recyclable? So somebody somewhere had to sit around and say hey I can take a plastic bottle and I can melt it down or break it into smaller fragments or whatever and I can remold it and I can make it into a plastic bag or I might be able to mold it into another plastic bottle or I might be able to mold it into a container of some sorts. So they had to come up with this idea. They had to come up with, I guess, this, this hypothesis or this theory or whatever. And then they had to go through scientific experimentation, actually make the product. And then they had to try to market it and get somebody to buy it. So when they did that, then when people actually bought the product that they had made from this recyclable material, then there was a demand for that product. And since there was a demand for that product, there became a need to recycle. So that's what makes things recyclable. So of course we know that a lot of states across the country have seen a decline in the types of plastics that are recyclable. And unfortunately here, we only have the two types, type one and type two. But the good thing is, is that probably about 80 to 85% of the plastic in your house is probably a one or a two. So that makes it a good thing because um, there's there's a lot more things that we can we can recycle. Okay, so a number one is high density polyethylene. I'm sorry, that's number two. That's high density polyethylene. And number one is polyethylene terephthalate. Okay, so polyethylene terephthalate and high density polyethylene are the two types that we do recycle, one and a two. Okay, so how do you find out if your plastics are a one or a two? Well, you look on the bottom of your plastic containers, either on the bottom, sometimes they're hidden around the sides right here. You're going to find the recycle symbol, which is a triangle made out of chasing arrows. And inside of that triangle with chasing arrows, you will see a number inside of it. You will see the number one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. I'm sure you probably cannot see that, but right there is my triangle and it is a number one. Okay, so yes, these guys are recyclable. Most of your food containers and your beverage containers are going to be a one. Um, the rest of the stuff, jugs, 
like milk jugs and detergent jugs and all that stuff, those are going to be a two. So those are recyclable as well. So most of the things in your house are a one or a two. Um, number fives happen to be your yogurt containers, your butter containers, things like Country Crock, Shed Spread, that type thing. Um, those are going to be a five and those are not recyclable. Then I know a lot of people are trying to support our local restaurants and stuff. So of course, a lot of things were being served in styrofoam, um, which is a number six. We don't recycle those either. So maybe you could think of some smart way to um, still support your local business, but maybe not use the styrofoam um, in the in the wake of all of this that's going on. So anyways, but you do need to support them, but anyways. Um, so we do not recycle styrofoam around here. Now we have two different kinds of, of polystyrene. You have the puffy kind that your takeaway trays are in, but then we also have the non-puffy kind um, that's like the cookie trays inside of cookie packages. Those are a six as well, and we don't recycle them either. So if I have a bunch of ones and twos, and I've decided that I'm going to recycle plastic, where do I take them? Well, we can take them to any convenience center and leave it there. There is a trailer at each convenience center that um, I think every one of them is blue. has a little hitch on it. One side's for the aluminum, one side's for the plastic. You can put it there. You can always take things to the Newport Recycling Center um, or Myers Diversified also accepts plastic um, from businesses. So, you know, you know call them up and, and ask them if you're a business, if you can you know, get on their pickup list for recycling plastic. Because plastic is, we talked about at the very beginning, has gas and oil in it. Okay, so when this guy gets thrown out, if it does not get picked up, when it starts to, we've talked about trash, how long it takes to decay. So a lot of things, you know, like paper and, and organic materials and stuff may take anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months to start decaying or rotting away. Plastic can take anywhere for from hundreds of years to thousands of years to start to decay. And really honestly, when plastic decays, it never really goes away. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until you can't see it but it is still there and it just gets mixed up in with the dirt. And we know our little worm friends live in the dirt and other little insects and stuff, you know, live in the dirt. So I'm sure that that's not good for them, for these little plastic pieces to be in the dirt. But just remember, okay, when these guys get thrown out, they, they really don't decay. They just break up into smaller and smaller pieces. So that's why it's so important for us to recycle because these are made out of non-renewable resources like the oil and the gas. And that helps cut back on that um, demand as well. So, um, we also, since we only take ones and twos, the other thing that we can recycle in our county is a four, which is your low density polyethylene, which is your plastic film and your plastic bags. So those don't go to the convenience center. Those go to your local grocery stores. Those go to Food City or Walmart or Lowe's accepts them. And in all of those places, they have been set up right as you're walking in. A lot of um, Walmart and Lowe's is right when you start to walk in the first double doors and you're in that kind of in between before you actually get into the store they have a little bin set up that says plastic here put your plastic bags there and your other plastic film like the wrapping on your toilet paper the wrapping on your paper towels if you buy diapers in the filmed packages you can put that in there as well and um, we don't you don't put in f bags of freezer food like if you bought a bag of french fries or something like that don't put that in there because it's not exactly the same type of of plastic um but if anything stretches and doesn't pull, then you can put that in there and it'll be recycled and made into more grocery bags. So that helps because that keeps that stuff out of the landfill. Um, and we've not really talked a whole lot about a landfill, but once a landfill fills up with trash, that's it. You know, we have to find somewhere else to put our trash and we really need to try to not let that happen and extend the life of our landfill. So that's why we do encourage recycling so much. So if you're not recycling yet, um, just think about, you know, pick one thing that you could recycle. I know Miss Greta talked last week about paper. Um, you could decide that you wanted to recycle paper or maybe you want to just recycle plastic. Pick one thing and get used to recycling it and then begin adding other things to that as, we, as you go along and then you'll be into the habit of recycling all the time. Okay, so we are going to do a little craft. And for this craft, you will need a plastic bottle because we talked about plastics today. Um, and you will need 
some construction paper. I've already cut mine. I made mine into wings because we're going to make a firefly. You will need something for the eyes, whether you do button eyes or you do googly eyes, or I brought some pom-poms out. And since we are gluing on plastic, kids, you might want your parents to help you with a hot glue gun because this stuff, Elmer's glue doesn't really want to sit very well on plastic. It can, but you have to leave it and you have to, since it's round, it'd be hard to make it stay still. But I'm going to cut the label off my plastic bottle. You may decide that you want to paint yours. That's okay. For sake of time, I did not paint mine. But we're going to take and we're going to glue the wings right on the back of our bottle. And you have to be kind of careful because plastic will melt in a hot glue gun with a hot glue gun. So you might want it to be just a little careful. Make sure you don't you get extremely high temperature or it'll melt your plastic. So that was one thing that we didn't, I didn't really talk about and I apologize for that. Um, when they recycle the plastic, they take it and they break it into smaller little pieces, little shreds, and then they take those little pellets and shreds and stuff and then they melt them down and they'll pour them into a new mold and make it into something different. And I know, I think Miss Greta mentioned in her, um, one of her videos that a lot of synthetic fibers have plastic in them. So if you like to wear Under Armour or Nike or any kind of athletic type shorts or shirts or anything like that, you're actually wearing plastic. True, you sure are. Pretty neat, isn't it? Okay, so I got my, uh, my wings glued on there. I'm going to glue me some little black eyes on. Right here around the lid. Okay. Then, if you have a battery operated candle of some sorts, or if you have a glow stick, you could stick that glow stick right inside of there. And you have you a little lightning bug or a firefly. Okay. You could glue some little legs on it if you want to. Anyways, I didn't have any glow sticks. The glow sticks we had had already lost their glow. So, but you could get one, stick it right in there, and you'd have your own little firefly toy. So, let me show you another one that I did with some plastic. Um, right after Easter, of course, you know, we have all these Easter eggs laying around. And Easter eggs are not recyclable. They are a seven, which is a hodgepodge of different things. So, you can't recycle those guys. But anyways, we took an Easter egg and we made little lightning bugs out of them too. So, my egg was not quite big enough for the candle, but anyways, let me open it up here. We put a battery operated candle in it, and I had to tape it up, but we drilled some holes in the bottom and poked in pipe cleaners for the legs. We put in some pipe cleaners for the antenna. We glued on little googly eyes, and then we had glued on their little wings, and if you can see, He's shining. A little lightning bug shining in the back. Anyways, that's another cool little craft to do with your kids. This one requires a little bit more adult help than the plastic bottle one that we made, but that's okay. This is a great little fun activity to do with your kids, and then they've got their own little lightning bug to play with. So, we hope that you guys find some interesting ways to reuse things. Remember, our Funky Junk Art Contest is still going on. We've had six or seven submissions so far, so you've still got time because our Funky Junk Art Contest is going through till April 30th. So get those submissions in. You can either message Keep Cock County Beautiful or you can email it at kccbdirector at gmail.com or you can send it to myself or Greta Carr on our Facebook pages. Mine's Mika Henderson. Hers is Greta Carr. You can send it to us that way too. We don't mind. Um, and we'll get those on there and then hopefully we'll get an, a winner announced next week. We're going to do different age categories, K through 2, 3 through 5, and 6 through 8. So if you've not gotten anything in, find you something laying around the house that normally gets thrown away and make some kind of cool art 
out of it or a toy or something like that. We've had a turtle, we've had an airplane, we've had a unicorn puppet, we had some wind chimes. So we've already had some really cool stuff. So don't forget that. And parents, if you want to get involved in our Take Pride campaign, personal responsibility in your designated environment, we'd love to see pictures of your yards where you're trying to make things look beautiful during this time of quarantine when we can't get out and pick up trash because um, of the uncertainty of how long the virus lives on these surfaces, okay? So get those pictures into us and we will share them on Keep Cock County Beautiful. And we will see you guys on Wednesday. Miss Greta will be here tomorrow doing an activity with you guys. So we hope you stay safe and that you stay well. We'll see you later. Bye.